Hello everyone, Edwin Leonard here. In this YouTube segment, I'm going to be talking about the 2013 AFC East. My predictions for it. This is going to be the preview for 2013 AFC East. And I'll start out first place. Um, you know, nothing mind-boggling here or nothing anybody should be flabbergasted about. I'm going to pick the New England Patriots at 10 and 6. Now the bad news is, you know, as most of us know, the Patriots have lost tight end Aaron Hernandez to incarceration. They lost Wes Welker to the Denver Broncos. Gronkowski might be out, you know, for part of the season. And they've lost a good percentage of, of the receptions that they've had from last year. But I believe mainly due attributed to a lackluster division, they still are the cream of the crop and the supreme team in this division. They're 16-2 and two in the division in the last three seasons, you know, that's their record against the AFC East, so it's, you know, domination, you know, I think is an understatement for that. Uh, place kicker, um, Steven Guskowski, he will be back. He was the leading scorer in the NFL with 153 points last season. And if we just look at, you know, even from last season, you know, it was a game, 49-19 uh, subjugation of Buffalo in that season. That was fairly emblematic, you know, of what the Patriots can do, you know, have done to AFC um, opponents and, you know, there may have only been one, you know, team in addition to them that's even posted, you know, a winning record in, in any season in the last, um, you know, three, three seasons, like one time. So, um, and I believe that was the Jets in 2000, um, 2010 went 11 and 5, so there's really not an overabundance of competition for them, and that is why I like, you know, like them. They also have, you know, revered, you know, coach um, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, when he retires, is obviously, you know, he should go down as one of the top five QBs in NFL history. Okay, for second place, I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins at 7 and 9. I know a lot of people are lauding the Dolphins and they think, you know, they're going to go, you know, maybe 9 and 7, 10 and 6 seems to be a consensus pick for them. But, you know, it's kind of like I'll believe it when I see it. Um, they've, only, uh, they've only posted one season where they've had a winning record in the last seven. So I kind of like, I still want to see this come to fruition and actually have it materialized before me before I start, you know, building them up and, you know, thinking, you know, this is a team that's going to be to be reckoned with and a playoff contender, so on and so forth. There are some things that are auspicious for Miami, though, for this coming season. Uh, one thing is their schedule. Now, they do have 10 games against teams that were 500 or less last season. So, you know, that might help them out somewhat, and they can surprise. I mean, I'm still going with the 7-9 and nine record. And if they could get some anticipated improvement from quarterback Ryan Tannehill and, uh, you know, the receivers, you know, they got tight end Dustin Keller in the offseason, wide receiver Mike Wallace. If everybody kind of, you know, the offense placed their potential and they improved dramatically, you know, their scoring offense was was 27th in the league last year at 18 points per game, and they were 26 in passing yards per game. So that's going to have to improve significantly if they want a chance to compete with uh, New England in the division. So, you know, we basically are going to have to see, you know, how these people pan out. And if, you know, their main offensive proponents play to their capabilities, you know, they could contend. But I'm going to go with 7-9, second place for Miami. Okay, third place in the AFC East, I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills, 5-11. and 11. You know, this is a year where they're kind of transmogrifying and transforming. It's a transition year for them. And, you know, they lost, you know, their quarterback in the offseason. Uh, they don't have Fitzpatrick anymore. They're going with a new coach, a new QB um, with Cobb. And uh, two primary running backs last year, some good news for them, combined for nearly 1,700 yards. And, you know, on top of that, 
they still had, um, you know, they had one of their running backs, I believe Jackson, had missed some games, and they still managed to amass close to 1,700 yards. If they could keep their two primary running backs healthy this year, and they can maybe somehow, you know, formulate maybe some game plans where they can uh, dominate time of possession and run the ball frequently, uh, you know, they could be competitive, you know, a little more so than, you know, originally, you know, anticipated by most people. So we'll see how um, how that goes. Another good news for the Bills, and it's no offense to the New York Jets. Hey, I'm a New York Jets fan, but they did annihilate the Jets on the last regular season game last year, 28-9. to And, you know, who knows, maybe that'll be a harbinger of things to come for them, you know, if they could sweep the Jets, you know somehow come at least come close to breaking even with everyone else maybe you know they might you know they can you know contend possibly especially coupled with you know New England you know missing a lot of their weapons and Tom Brady having to force forcing to uh, be adaptable to some you know new receivers on their team okay last but not least for fourth and last place the cellar dweller I'm gonna go with the New York Jets at 5 and 11 and, um, you know, the Jets, unfortunately, you know, they don't have much, you know, good news right now. They're a team in disarray. Uh, they're, uh, you know, this is Rex Ryan's supposedly probably his make or break year. If they don't at least maybe go 9-7 and seven and or playoffs, then, you know, he's probably going to be terminated. Um, so this makes it a, a tough year for him because they got their, you know, their quarterback situation is very unsure. You know, Mark Sanchez, you know, might very well still be the best of who they have right now. Um, Geno Smith, you know, can he be the quarterback of the future? It's a lot of speculation. We'll have to see how that pans out in uh, training camp. It's going to be a competition uh, with Sanchez, and, um, you know, he's going to compete with him. And we'll see, you know, maybe one of those two, and maybe even someone else might get, you know, the quarterback position. Who really, I mean, with the New York Jets, you know, who really knows? They lost a cornerback, Jarrell Revis, last season. Uh, Mark Sanchez, I believe, over the last four seasons, he's had the worst um, quarterback rating of all the, you know, the quarter, you know, starting QBs right now. And um, this is a team that really, you know, you know, has really gone down, and in, in, you know, the defense has, you know, declined significantly. Even though they were number eight in total defense last year, they were number 20 in scoring defense, and I believe that has gone down the last three years. So this was a team that once predicated itself on defense when Coach Rex Ryan first arrived. Now it's a team which has to establish, you know, possibly a defensive identity um, once again in order for them to have any chance of even being, you know, somewhat competitive in this division. So. They, um, this is a, you know, they were, they were tied for most turnovers uh, last season in the NFL. I believe it was 37. And obviously, you know, you know whether it's a dropsy epidemic, we all remember that, you know, that infamous butt fumble that took place, you know, involving Mark Sanchez, and that, you know, kind of almost epitomized the season for the Jets, unfortunately. So um, anyway, um, those are those are my picks and. Um, this is a very low budget on video, you know, segment that I'm doing, so don't mind me, people. I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to show you my picks and bring my camera over to the, the computer here. And once again, we're going to just show you real quick that it's going to be New England, first place, 10 and 6, Miami, second, 7 and 9. Buffalo 5 and 11, Jets 5 and 11. Buffalo presumably wins the tiebreaker to stay out of the seller position. So, people, uh, this will conclude my 2013 AFC East predictions. And in my next segment, I'm going to be talking about 2013 AFC North on preview predictions. Till next time, people, stay well.